At this time, I'd like to further your understanding of enzymatic inhibitors, and then I'm going to apply that information to the specific enzymatic inhibitors that we're talking about, the proton pump inhibitors. As I was saying, sometimes our medications do the intended action. They act on, for instance, an enzyme, but that enzyme is used to do something else that we don't want to affect. A very common example of that is found with the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or aspirin, or the NSAIDs, all of those, they actually affect an enzyme called cyclooxygenase. Cyclooxygenase is an enzyme that's abbreviated as COX, COX, and it is great because COX, the enzyme, is used in the inflammatory cascade. And if we can block that enzyme, then we're going to decrease inflammation. So great, that's perfect, isn't it? Well, it's not so perfect because of the fact that that enzyme, the COX enzyme, is also used in other roles. It's got a fair few roles, but uh, two major roles are having to do with protective roles in both the stomach and also in the kidneys. And that's where the side effects come. The side effects of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and also in aspirin have to do with the uh, potential of stomach ulcers because we don't have a lot of that protection that the COX enzyme was giving and also in kidney damage because once again we don't have the protection that the COX enzyme was giving. Now those examples are especially prevalent in people who take the uh, COX inhibitors, or in other words, aspirin or non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, when they take those for a long period of time. And once again, as I've said before, it's not an issue for omeprazole and the proton pump inhibitors because the enzyme that we're talking about is almost specific to the parietal cells. So we don't have to worry about that, but there is another issue with enzymes that's relevant to the proton pump inhibitors. We mentioned that in some cases, medications may actually have a molecular structure that can bind to, for instance, another enzyme or another receptor. I think we've talked about it with respect to another receptor, but now we're talking about it with respect to binding to another enzyme, an enzyme that it's not supposed to bind to. In other words, there are medications that have crossover effects. They may have a little bit of a binding to another enzyme, and some, not all of the proton pump inhibitors, but some of the proton pump inhibitors have that crossover effect. Omeprazole can have a slight binding to some of the liver enzymes. Remember that the liver enzymes are made to metabolize drugs. And when we read about omeprazole in a drug manual, the manual is going to say that the omeprazole inhibits CYP2C19 and CYP2C8. So both of those are inhibited by omeprazole. What does that mean? Well, when you hear about a medication that affects the liver enzymes, abbreviated as CYP something, 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 at least three more letters and numbers after the CYP, basically just means that you need to be careful about combining that medication with other medications. That's really easy. You don't have to memorize the exact enzymes that every drug affects. You simply look at your drug monograph, drug manual, or the reference manual that you're using, and you check which specific drugs are going to be affected. But it's important to note that the effects can be very variable. 
In some instances, there might be hardly any effect. In other instances, omeprazole may actually increase the effects of another drug. And in other instances, for instance, omeprazole may actually decrease the effects of another drug. Once again, that'll always be in your drug manuals, so you don't have to memorize that type of information. This kind of effect is very common in many medications and even in a lot of different foods. So a lot of different foods can affect liver enzymes that metabolize drugs. For instance, grapefruit juice is one of the biggest concerns. It's a very strong inhibitor of cytochrome P450 CYP3A4. And that particular enzyme is involved in metabolizing over 50% of the medications that we have on the market today. The effects of grapefruit juice can be so substantial that even a small amount, a small 200 mil glass of grapefruit juice or one fruit could have significant effects and actually result in drug toxicity. And furthermore, the effect doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to decrease the action or increase the action. Sometimes that effect is different for different drugs. We just said that by inhibiting the same enzyme in the liver, the effect can be different for different drugs. For instance, grapefruit juice inhibits CYP3A4 and makes some drugs less active and other drugs more active. How can it affect two different medications so differently? Well, the enzyme may change drug A from a prodrug to an active drug. When grapefruit juice inhibits the enzyme, in that case, the prodrug would remain inactive. Conversely, the enzyme may change drug B from a highly active drug to an inactive drug. Inhibition of the enzyme in that case will allow more highly active drug to remain in the system for longer. The other thing to remember about drugs and enzymes is that some drugs are inducers of certain liver enzymes. And when a drug is an inducer of a liver enzyme, it basically goes over to the liver cells and instructs the cell to upregulate the production of an enzyme. Remember, we make our proteins with the DNA in the nucleus of the cell. Well, a drug that acts as an inducer of an enzyme is basically instructing the cell to increase the production of that enzyme. But once again, as we apply that to our medications, your drug manuals will have all of the various reactions that are possible, and it's not something that you really need to memorize at all.